Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker and in today's video we're once again looking back at some past NBA draft grades and instead of doing Bleacher Report today just because they don't have draft grades going back any further than 2009, we're over here on NBADraft.net who have some, some really interesting grades for this class that includes players like Derrick Rose, Michael Beasley, Kevin Love, Russell Westbrook, guys like that. But really quickly before we get started, if you enjoy the NBA then consider subscribing. I upload every single day and obviously the NBA is hopefully going to be coming back within the next like six to eight weeks so there'll be you know some more news type videos coming out as well and I just looked right before I did this video last month about half of my watch time half my viewership was from people that are not subscribed to the channel so that's a good thing because new people are coming in but also make sure you're subs so you're not missing out any of the videos that you may want to see but with all that said let's go and jump into it okay so these are sorted a little bit differently than the bleach report ones where it's not in order of who was selected it's just alphabetical order of the team so I'm not going to cover every single team here but just the ones that I find interesting and we're going to begin here here with the at the time Charlotte Bobcats selecting DJ Augustine at number nine, Alexis Agenza at 20, Kyle Weaver at 38. C plus grade here for getting DJ Augustine. And he was a player that I remember a lot of people really liking. They just didn't didn't love the size out of DJ Augustine, but he had the playmaking ability, the shooting skill to be a really good player. And it never happened at like a super, super high level, but he's still in the league now. He's someone that's had a long career, found his place a little bit in Orlando. And depending on your point guard situation, could have been a starting point guard for you, but was never going to be a really, really good one. Kind of a borderline bench starter guy for his career, but still a solid player, but nothing crazy, especially when you're considering a top 10 pick. Moving on now to the Chicago Bulls who get an A grade for getting Derrick Rose and Omer Ashik, and this has to be an A plus if you're taking away the circumstances, obviously the injury stuff, but not just for the Rose pick, but uh, but also Omar Ashik, who yes, got overpaid later, but was on you know a rotational big for this team to the point where he got that big contract uh, there in Chicago. Derrick Rose obviously is a player that um, if you redid their career a couple of times and he doesn't get injured, he ends up having a much better career than he did, but still an outstanding player, obviously, uh, pre-injury and has had a nice little comeback as well in Minnesota and Detroit ever since, and was the right pick at number one at the time, but just again, the injury stuff is uh, super unfortunate. We move on now to the Cleveland Cavaliers who get a D grade, and they selected JJ Hickson at number 19, and this is the guy uh, that they wouldn't trade for Maurice Stoudemire when LeBron was still there. JJ Hickson's a talented play was a talented player, uh, really good athlete, someone that could score on the inside, and the potential was there. It just, it just never really worked out for him for whatever reason. Uh, but his, literally, his legacy is the guy that the Cavs wouldn't trade for Amari Stoudemire when LeBron was there, and I think that was the year they got Antoine Jameson from the Wizards. Uh, not really going to worry too much about the Dallas Mavericks with just the 51st pick here, nor the Denver Nuggets with just a second-round pick. A lot of people trading away their first-round picks in this draft. Now we get to the Golden State Warriors with that really, really nice old-school logo uh, that we love. An A-minus grade for getting. Anthony Randolph at 14. I've talked about Anthony Randolph in a video, I don't know, three or four weeks ago, talking about, you know, some NBA draft prospects that I loved that it just never worked out for. And Anthony Randolph is one of those guys. He is a, a 2K player for me. Where, like he was just a player that every single time that I played 2K when he was in the league, I got him and he got, you know, he had really high potential for whatever reason, ended up being a really good player, just super fun to play with. Incredible athlete, a nice left-handed player, and in 2K could end up shooting the ball. In actual basketball though, never really capitalized on those raw skills and on that athleticism. They get an A- minus grade for selecting him here, uh, but never really did too much in the league, unfortunately, uh, for Golden State or otherwise. Not really too worried about the uh, Houston Rockets here, but the Indiana Pacers are an interesting one. They get a D grade for selecting Brandon Rush, who they got in the TJ4 trade, and I, I'm, I could be remembering this incorrectly, but I'm pretty confident. Yeah, so it says unloading Jermaine O'Neal and his two-year $40 million deal was necessary, but didn't get enough in return as TJ4, like O'Neal's injury prone, it could be more than he's worth. Okay, so they traded the Jermaine O'Neal contracts for 13, which was Brandon Rush, and they also got TJ Ford. Uh, but the interesting part of this is that they also got Roy Hibbert in this draft. And say what you want about the later part of Roy Hibbert's career and how he kind of just completely fell off the earth there. But when he was really good and the Pacers were really good, he was a, a really strong force for this team on the inside. And Brandon Rush never really found his way in the NBA because he couldn't shoot the ball, but was a really good athlete and could defend. And if he could ever figure out how to shoot the ball, he would have been a really good player. Interestingly, was on the first one or two Golden State Warriors championships teams uh, with Steph and Clay and guys like that. Uh, he was definitely there. He wasn't really playing, but interestingly, Brandon Rush uh, was there. But the fact that they got Roy Hibbert in this draft and they got a D grade, certainly this grade would be much, much better if you're looking back on it now in hindsight. 
The Clippers now getting an A grade for a draft of Eric Gordon, DeAndre Jordan, and then I'm not really worried about Mike Taylor later on, but Eric Gordon was a player that was pretty polarizing coming out of the draft, could clearly shoot the basketball, but the other parts of his game were a little bit questionable, didn't have great size and wasn't you know, considered a point guard by any means. So kind of up in the air in terms of what he would do in the NBA, but this for me has to be an A plus grade when you're talking about getting DeAndre Jordan and then getting Eric Gordon, who was a really critical piece of the Chris Paul trade and that obviously him and DeAndre Jordan and then Blake Griffin later on uh, were a big part of what made those Clippers teams, you know, playoff contenders year after year. So I definitely think that an A is a fair grade here for LA. We move on now to Memphis selecting OJ Mayo with a picture that looks like, you know, his senior year in high school or something with the, the background and everything. They also get Darrell Arthur with a pick that I believe they got in the Pau Gasol trade from the Lakers. OJ Mayo was a player that people loved. Like everybody loved OJ Mayo. They loved the scoring ability. They loved the upside. They loved the playmaking. And it just, it just didn't happen. Like he had some good years, but he never became the player that a lot of people thought that he would down the road. Darrell Arthur was a nice rotation big there for a little while, but this is, this is not an A minus grade. Unfortunately, it could have been like OJ Mayo really could have been something. It just, it just didn't happen for him for whatever reason. We move on now to the Miami Heat getting an A grade for selecting Michael Beasley, and interestingly, Mario Chalmers as well. So Beasley never played with a Heat Big 3. They salary dumped him to, I believe, Minnesota, but he was an incredibly talented player coming out of Kansas State. Could shoot it a little bit. Great inside player, incredible rebounder, really good athlete, and kind of just got a raw, a raw deal there by not being allowed to develop in Miami. I think his career would have been much better off had he been able to stay in Miami and had that opportunity to develop there, but the Heat big three era just kind of pushed him out. And then Mario Chalmers was an interesting guy because he was actually pretty critical to those those championship teams there in Miami as a guy that could shoot, could defend, wasn't really going to be asked to do a ton as like a true point guard because they had plenty of playmaking with Wade and, and LeBron. They could feed Bosch in the post as well, but uh, hit some big shots for that team and was the type of player that could handle big pressure situations, which you're going to be constantly in uh, with a team like that in Miami. So Good pick there, and again, the Michael Beasley thing, I really felt like could have worked out much better if he had stuck around, but they just, they want to do the big three thing, which makes uh, complete sense. The Bucks now getting an A- minus grade for Joe Alexander, who I think played a total of like two seasons in the NBA. Then they're getting uh, Mbaa Mute, though, at 37, who was a nice rotation wing for a while, and apparently they got Richard Se Richard Jefferson via trade. Is this the Yi Jianlian trade? It is. So it says, the Yi Jianlian trade le leaves just one similar quasi-forward Charlie of Villanueva to compete with Mbaa Mute. So I guess that's how they got Richard Jefferson. Gian Leon, who they picked the year before at like six, ends up going uh, to the Nets. So all around, just some weirdness going on in Milwaukee. Joe Alexander just, just wasn't a good pick. Never worked out for him at all there at number eight. We move on now to the Minnesota Timberwolves, who get a C- minus grade for bringing in Kevin Love and Nikola Pekovic. And Nikola Pekovic was like a really, really good player there for a few seasons and then just completely fell off. So big value there at 31, just didn't have quite the longevity. And Kevin Love's a really, really good player to get at number five overall. Um, didn't bring a ton of team success to Minnesota, but had some incredible statistical years and then obviously moved on to Cleveland. I guess they just didn't like the trade part of this, but the Kevin Love and the Pekovic selection certainly deserves a better grade than a C minus. We move on now to the, at the time, New Jersey Nets getting Brooke Lopez, Ryan Anderson, and Chris Douglas Roberts, and Yideon Leon via trade. That is a very, very interesting draft haul. So Ryan Anderson could really shoot the basketball, ended up going to Orlando, I want to say maybe for Courtney Lee. I don't know if I'm remembering that correctly. Brooke Lopez is one of the leading scorers in franchise history. Great selections there. And I always kind of had a soft spot for Chris Douglas Roberts as well. It just never uh, ended up happening there in New Jersey. We move on now to Danilo Gallinari being, I didn't realize Danilo Gallinari was picked sixth by the by the Knicks getting a C minus grade really really good player ended up moving on to Denver in the Carmelo Anthony trade so they got some trade uh, assets out of this draft again to end up being able to get Carmelo I honestly did not realize that Gallinari was picked this high when he's been healthy though he's been pretty much an automatic 20 points per game uh, when he's been able to stay on the floor and a really really nice player especially with that size we move on now to the Orlando Magic getting a B grade for selecting Courtney Lee at 22 for me this is this is like an A to an A plus because Courtney Lee was playing real minutes on a team that made the finals in 2009 as a rookie and could shoot the ball a little bit good defender good athlete and has had a really nice solid career 
in the NBA. So a really, really nice pick there for Orlando. We move on to the Philadelphia 76ers getting a B plus grade for Mo Spates at 16. Mo Spates could really score the ball, had a nice run there in Golden State as well. Never been a great defender, but for a 16th overall pick, solid value for someone that can score the ball the way that he can or could, I guess. Uh, Robin Lopez now going to the Phoenix Suns. In addition to Goran Dragic, they get a B grade there. This has to be more like an A to an A plus when you're considering the value at 45 for Goran Dragic. And then you're also getting Robin Lopez was a nice uh, rotation piece for a handful of years. And we've got the Portland Trailblazers getting Jared Bayless, who a lot of people really liked. Didn't really work out because he didn't have the size to be a two and was kind of more of a combo guard. Didn't really have a position. Still a solid player, but not really what you want out of the 11th pick. But getting Nicholas Batum at 25, a player that was a borderline all-star at times. We now know him as the guy that got overpaid in Charlotte. But when healthy, was a really, really good player. Was a versatile player. Could shoot, could play make, could defend, could rebound, could do pretty much everything. Really good player. Great value. Really good draft uh, to get him at 25. The Jared Bayless thing kind of brings it down, but still a solid value there in the second round. Jason Thompson going to the Kings, getting a B- minus grade was someone that we were always kind of waiting to break out and it just never happened. The Spurs getting George Hill at 26, getting a B minus grade. That's that's an A plus for me. Uh, they ended up trading obviously George Hill for Kawhi Leonard uh, a few years later. So when you're talking about that kind of value, but even just getting George Hill at 26, really, really good player, good value there for the Spurs. Not surprising at all. The Seattle Supersonics logo showing up here now, getting an A minus grade for getting Russell Westbrook and Serge Ibaka and then DJ White and Devon Harden uh, in the later parts of the draft as well. But this is an A plus 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 when you're getting Russ, who was a surprise pick at four, but ended up working out. And then Serge Ibaka as well at 24. An incredible, incredible draft for Seattle. And other than that, now we've got two more teams left. We've got Costa Kufos going 23 to the Jazz, getting a B plus grade. He's had a solid career. I'd go more like a B here. I don't want to go B plus for someone that's just kind of a rotation big at 23, but a nice pick. And then JaVale McGee with an interesting picture there going number 18, getting an A minus grade for the Washington Wizards with that nice old school logo. Had some nice years there in Washington, has bounced around in the league. I would probably go like B minus A, or excuse me, B plus uh, or maybe even a B here for JaVale. It just, there's been plenty of issues with JaVale McGee's career, but he's been a solid player. I don't want to, don't want to, you know, trash him too hard. It's, it's already happened to him enough uh, throughout his career. But yeah, that is going to be the end of today's video. Looking back at some 2008 NBA draft grades here on nbadraft.net. It's kind of interesting to go through this looking at like accounting for second round picks and things like that as well instead of just going through in the regular draft order. So let me know if you guys enjoyed this format better. If you'd rather me go back to the other format where I look at them and kind of have them uh, in order because I can go through and just do that ahead of time. But yeah, like I said, that is going to be the end of today's video. As I said in the beginning of the video, my name is Tucker. I thank you all very much for watching and uh, yeah, I will see you all next time.